flipping these coins like they hopping fences. Crypto Danks, he in the trenches. Welcome back, Crypto Enthusiasts. It's your boy, Crypto Danks, back again no with another vendor today. All it's a quick CASPA update on price, market cap, maybe potential long or short positions. We'll get into that briefly and the rust migration. But first, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel. I know you get tired of hearing it, but it's facts and we're talking truth over here on Crypto Truth Unveiled. So, CASPA, let's start with the rust migration and the CASPA lytics. So, <clears throat> as far as CASPA lytics are concerned, over the last 24 hours, we've had 85,962 transactions, all right? That's literally 0.9949 TPS, transactions per second. Now, 86,000 over the last 24 hours. That's some pretty significant use for a crypto that's not a top 10, not even a top 20. It's being used and moved around, and we are slowly growing towards the Rust Note side of things as we move towards migration. Now, I did make a short the other day saying that we're stagnant around 20%, sub 20%, and we've been kind of stuck around there for the last few days or a week or so. It's been about six or seven days now that we're hitting just 20% and 19%. Check out my short. I explain a little bit of why I might think that is the case, um, but I believe that we will eventually grow. Um, and the overview of the chart shows the percentages of block mined to go to mined by go and rust nodes for the given day. So you can see here we started off at 98% uh, or 100% even of go long and then down to 80%, 79.9% and 20% for rust. Um, this will probably increase uh, as due to the resources will be increasing for CASPA. But over the long term, this is very bullish. We've gone from 0% to 20% in less than under a month. So very bullish. And some of the significance of this, um, if you don't know like why Rust is important, right? Like a lot of people don't know why is Rust important? Well, it improves performance, okay? So um, especially over Golong. So in terms of speed, memory, efficiency, Rust is king. Um, the majority of the code base migrated to Rust. Um, with all of that happening, Caspa can expect much faster transaction processing with reduced latency and overall network performance in general. That's important um, for Caspa. Also bringing enhanced security um, with Rust strong uh, type system and ownership model it helps prevent common programming errors and vulnerabilities, right? So by leveraging uh, Rust safety features, CASPA can enhance the security of its blockchain um, or block DAG or whatever you wanna call it, reducing the risk of exploitations and attacks, right? Um, there's parallelism uh, and concurrency, which um, Rust's powerful concurrency methods, it, it's um, safety guarantees makes it easier to write concurrent and parallel code. And that's very important for the code aspect through Rust, which Rust, uh, Rust dominant code base, Caspa can take advantage of these features to improve the scalability of the throughput of the network. All right, so these are all important. Of course, ecosystem growth, you know, it may attract more developers once Rust is fully migrated over to the 51%. Um, it'll obviously bring developers who are more proficient or interested in Rust and specifically, um, which also in turn will lead to community participation, contributions, and the, ultimately the development of new tools to be created and used in the applications within the CASPA ecosystem or KRC20 once we go live with that. Also, um, the importance of Rust hitting 51% over Golong, it can <clears throat> demonstrate milestones being hit, right? Showing that CASPA is increasing in its technology, its, its, its performance through the milestones that it's trying to achieve. It's showing that CASPA is bringing itself closer to the goals and visions that it's had and set itself for. 
all right so it's important to know that while a 51 percent rust migration is a notable achievement the full benefits immediately they may not be realized um, but the Caspa team is working hard to optimize this system and um, and they'll address any issues that are, are that will arise of course just like any project there's going to be challenges there's going to be issues and it's smoothing ensuring a smooth transact uh, smooth transition over to rust is um, you know the most important for all you know holders of Caspa. Furthermore, the migration process is gradual. So as you can see, it's a gradual increase, even though it's pretty quick, it's a gradual increase. Um, and the remaining Golong components will still play a role until they're fully migrated and phased out. So the Casper community and devs, they're gonna closely monitor the network's performance, as you can see, and stability of this transition period. Overall though, achieving a 51% migration rate is a positive development for Caspa once we get there, signaling the project's progress and obviously, you know, technological advancement. All right, so this will help investor confidence. All right, this is very, very important. So where are we at today? Well, we're at 20% migration rate. We've been there for about a week and I think we'll soon move in the upward trajectory. Um, right now we're at $2.5 billion market cap, almost 2.6 billion exactly, 11.07 cent, uh, cents. I was able to pick up a bag at exactly 11 cents on Mexi last night, which was fantastic. Um, let's take a look at the chart real quick. So we're on the daily, right? And you can see here, we have a really nice looking chart on the daily time frame. It's been bullish from day one and continuing to do so. Now we did break the ultimate trend line that I was going on about that we had never really broken in the history of Caspa. And we did actually end up breaking that because um, it was something like, where did I have it? I think it was something like here that we had this and it ended up breaking um, but we're still doing okay down here as well i wouldn't be too worried about that trend line broken now where are we in terms of price action if we pulled from the most recent pump to all-time high we're at the value area low all right so between these two lines here we have the two blue lines which is the value area down on the left over here this is volume by price, okay? So this is all volume by price action, all right? So the more of these sticks, the candle wicks that are sticking out, the more volume and price action is in that specific price zone, right? And the green line here, this green line is called the point of control, all right? So this point of control is where all the money wants to be traded in Caspa. That's where most of the orders are set, okay? Point of control now typically what happens is caspa will bounce between this point of control uh, between the value area high and low typically going back to the point of control where money likes to be traded because that's where the most volume is and then either moving upward or back downward right as you can see here if we pulled open just this area from its last pump again right we can pull it open from the last pump we can pull the chart to right about here before the next pump. And we did have a push up to the value area high, down to the value area low, and then push back up to the value area high, blowing past the point of control. This was when we had this major uptick and now we are back in this bottom area. So the last time we were in the value area low, we dipped even lower and then we skyrocketed back up. Now remember, I did make a video on CASPA's power law and how we're looking to hit significant numbers over the next few months into the summer, possibly July, looking at upwards of 38 cents, even possibly more. So looking deeper into that, it looks like we're setting up for another run up. Um, would I be looking to long CASPA right now? This is the daily chart if I were looking at it. When I'm looking at the market cipher B, because this is a big tool that I use, I'm seeing bearish negative money flow as well, well as bearish momentum waves. These are momentum waves here, okay? These gray or blue waves or whatnot. Now this green is money flow, positive money flow. The red is negative.
negative money flow, meaning money is flowing out of the asset. But as we come down on shorter time frames, it'll give us a better idea where the money flow is and the bullishness or bearishness of the momentum of this asset. Right now, it's more bearish than bullish, as you can see in the price action as we dip down. And then we also have money flowing out of the asset with bearish momentum waves printing. So right now, it does look kind of bearish to me. However, we are oversold significantly on the stochastic RSI. I would be looking for a long position, but first before that, I want to make sure that we're not going to completely shoot ourselves in the foot. So I've been waiting to see if CASP is going to dip under this 11 cent range. And if so, we're going to have to wait. If I were to pull back the entire chart, uh, the fixed profile range indicator, oops, and we're to see from November pump to now, we're still headed towards the value area low. The value area low is at 10 cents, all right, 10.1 cents, if you will. So it's likely that we might actually be headed down that way, given the fact that on the daily time frame we are bearish on the money flow and the momentum. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Casper hitting 10 cents and then retrigger and bounce back up towards the upside, possibly bringing all time highs again due to the power law of Casper. I hope this video helps. Hit all the links down below, get in the Patreon, become a dangster. We have all of the information you could possibly ask for on the best bullish cryptos out on the market today. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. Uh, flipping these coins like they hopping fences. Crypto danks, he in the trenches. Pushing up numbers, calling bench presser. Stacking up bits, no time for the cheaters. All day got young cloth on the speakers. He trades by day, moonlights by the ledger Buying low, selling high, no one does it better Blockchain's heavy, but his wallet's never tethered Dodging them dips like bad weather uh. Uh. Pockets deep like the coin mines digging No fud here, his hands never wriggling Dollar signs in the eyesight so keen Watch the market move, keeping his slate clean. Master of the trades, the exchange's bloody ground. The candlestick walks and his beats is laid down. Linked to the future with a blockchain bound. A crypto king wearing his digital crown. Crypto bank stacking coins to the ceiling. In the coin base where he's steadily dealing.